I grew up in the child dependency system. I was a victim of child abuse. My life spiraled downhill and I ended up on the streets. I came to find out that that is the expected result for kids exiting care, whether it's foster care, group home, probation. Me being out there homeless was not my own bad luck. 65% of kids leave foster care at age 18 with nowhere to go. They're just walking out the door to nothingness. This house represents a return to their dreams. My name is Lori Burns, and I'm the founder of The Teen Project. Every year, more than a million kids become homeless here in the U.S. The woman you just saw in that video, Lori Burns, is here. She's the founder of The Teen Project. She's dedicated to helping at-risk teenagers. And Jordan Jovanovic is a teenager who really benefited from all of this. First of all, thank you to both of you for being in studio. Thanks for having I us. I looked at your face in that video when you were talking about that, and you just lit up. Right. Uh, tell me a little bit about the project. The project, well, I originally started the project after I had had 18 foster kids. Believe it or not, I had no idea that kids were leaving foster care to homelessness. And when I found out, I was devastated. So the project is um, my own inspiration of getting there, out there on the streets and getting these kids help. So I speak everywhere I go, and it's a volunteer-centric organization, and a bunch of people have joined my force and we get out there and we get these kids a safe place to Why live. Why is it? Is it because when you're 18, you're out of the foster care system and, and kids have nowhere else to go? That's right. Is that right. a big part right. of the reason? Yes, that's exactly the reason. The checks stop and the foster parents uh, say it's time for, you know, your foster care has ended and you go and see the judge and he congratulates you and that's the end. But at 18 with no money, no car, no parents, walking straight out on the street, and most of these kids don't even get the normal upbringing that our kids would get. Uh, you know, teaching them about checking accounts or college. Mm -hmm. They don't have that, so they're very ill-equipped to walk out onto the streets alone. What are we looking at here? Some more video of... Uh... Right, this is the Orange County house, and this is our college home that Jordan now lives in. So Jordan's been there about a week now, and she's already getting her ID and getting signed up for college. All right, and I really want to ask you a little bit about this, Jordan. I, what, what's your situation? How did you get to this point? Um, I was living in Minnesota um, from foster care from 10 to 18. I got kicked out of the foster care system at 18. And I've been living off and on on the streets, mostly on on the streets um, in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And I came out to California about three months ago, and um, I was involved with a different organization that set me up with uh, Lori. And, um, and now I've been living at the house for about a week and a half. How did you even find out about this organization? Um, well, I went to the volunteer Yeah, we had a volunteer orientation, and a woman brought Jordan, and Jordan introduced herself. She was very shy, and um, she said that she was living in a storefront for the past um, couple of months out on the street, and we were so devastated to hear that she had left foster care, and she's been out there since 18. Now she's 21 and sleeping in front of a store. So um, we arranged for her to come immediately to our house. Jordan, tell me a little bit more about your situation. What about family? I mean, was there no one you could turn to in Minnesota? My mom is in and out of uh, prison. My dad's living on the streets in Minnesota. My family is a poor family, and it's not, it's not something I can rely on. Well, how did you even get to California and know you wanted to come here? I've been wanting to come here since I was like 10. Uh, my uncle used to tell me I have stars in my eyes, so mm -hmm. I've always wanted to do something with entertainment. Um, and I knew that it was warmer here. I knew we could sleep outside here. You can't do that in Minnesota, and it's freezing in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just took the chance and came, left all my stuff in Minnesota, and just came out here. You're an 18-year-old. No, I'm 21. You were. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm backing okay. up. I'm You're an 18-year-old girl living on the streets. I, you know, I, how dangerous was that for you? Uh, it was really dangerous because I was not from Minneapolis originally. I was like 30 minutes in a suburb from Minneapolis, and I got dumped off in Minneapolis. I didn't know any of the organizations. I didn't know anybody in Minneapolis. But, I mean, the whole thought to me of sleeping on a sidewalk when you're 18 years old, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, yeah, I look at 18-year-olds mm -hmm. or teenagers, and they're ill-equipped to do a lot of things. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely... Did you have friends who watched over you? I mean, no, no. Did you ever worry about your safety? Uh, yeah, that's that's why I got connected with Lori is because I, I am worried about my safety. So, how many young people do you deal with who are like Jordan? 
Oh, you know, the, the magnitude of the problem is huge. So we've got 25,000 kids aging out of foster care a year, and then you've got all the runaways, too. So when you're on the streets, it's, uh, it's just the magnitude of the problem is too much um, for one organization to handle, and that's why we created the Venice Beach Pad, which is a portal to all the 17,000 shelters that we refer to. Because the place where I walked into where I first met Jordan, there was like 80 homeless kids, and I was devastated at the the state of the health of some of these kids. No shoes, wounds on their feet, dreadlocks in their hair, just very dirty. And we are driven to make a difference with these kids. To that end, what are you doing for, for Jordan. youngsters like Jordan? Right. So Jordan lives in our college home that you saw pictures of in Orange County, and it's a beautiful home. We bought a little three-bedroom house, and the community came together and knocked it down, and a bunch of contractors pro bono built it up as a six-bedroom house. And she lives in the house, um, free room and board, and she's getting signed up for college now. She chose to go to Marinello Beauty School, and we're signing her up for that. So, and we're just waiting for her ID, and then she'll get rolling. So, and then we'll do job placement. We have internships and things of that nature to get them going. And she stays for two years, so she'll be out of school in about a year, and then we'll start working with her career to try to get her going there. Jordan, what is it like for you knowing that you have a place to go, and you have people who care about you now, you have a future? It's, it is one of the biggest reliefs that I've had for three years. I just had my birthday party that she had a bunch of people thrown for me, and I haven't had a birthday party for many years, not even, uh, not, a, not as good of a birthday party as I had there. And, um, and I mean, I, I'm really excited that I get to take a shower every night. I'm really excited that I have a nice, huge bed to sleep in. It's unbelievable. Okay, I have to ask you about this very quickly before right. we go. So I was in the system myself and homeless when I left. I thought it was my own bad circumstances. I ended up out on the streets as a prostitute and um, at the age of 23 my life was almost taken by two gunmen. And at that point I turned my life around but I had to write the story Punished for Purpose which talks about the people in my life I call the 13 angels and teachers that crossed my path to make me the Fortune 100 executive that I am, the foster mom and the founder of the organization that we just discussed. It's very good work that you do. Thank, Thank you for you. coming in. Thank Appreciate you so much it. for having us. And good luck to you. Thank you. All right, it is warmer out here, isn't it? Oh, yeah. All right, good luck.